whoa, 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 hold up, hold up a sec, right? So you watch my videos, hopefully you like them, right? And hopefully they help you, you know? On a job, you get a little bit stuck, you're like, ah, oh, there's a video on that. Hopefully they help you out. Well, how about you help me and get some more input into what I do, okay? You can head over to my Patreon page, show me some support, uh, and then you get some more direct contacts and, you know, you get to vote and decide on what I film and shoot next. All right, thanks a lot. Watch the rest of this video. Watch it to the end because there's something quite important towards the end of it. Thanks a lot. It's doing the usual valent thing from leaking from both sides of the case. Um, it's hard to pick up on this video, but this is leaking really bad. So today, we're from the Secotech Pro. Rather messy. It's divert that was leaking like a good one. So much there's a bath under it. Um, but today we're going down a different route. We're going to try the uh, this diverter valve kit from bicombi.com. I just want everyone to know here that this uh, this kit was not supplied to me. I bought this online. I paid full retail price for it all. Um, and you'll see later on in this video that I actually had to pay for something else on top of this. Uh, to make sure I was giving this kit a fair review. So keep watching to the end and you see you see what happens. But like I say, this isn't sponsored or anything like that. I paid for this kit out of my own pocket. And this will do both the uh, plastic and the brass Ecotec diverter valves, providing they have the uh, the red uh, the red plug, so the newer type electrical plug. So yeah, let's see how we get on with this. Just a little leak, a few little drips. Okay, so <clears throat> I put the heating on and turned the boiler off, so the diverter valve is in heating mode. I'm uh, draining, it, draining it down, and uh, as soon as it's drained, I'll pump the vessel up, and then we'll get started in here. So, unplug that, you have to get this, uh, you have to get this, motor off so we're still draining that at the moment to over pressurize this boiler I'm going to use the hoover just to dry out this tray because it's all filthy as you can hear the boiler is just just empty hoover time okay so this one does the motors on these can be a little bit fiddly to get off actually. They're not like the old ones where you push them sideways and they just come off. These ones actually uh, need a little bit more force to get them off. You have to really yank them. There we go. Leaking like a good one. Okay, so let's go. According to these instructions here, this is the one for the uh, brass valve, we use that and that to do it. Um, I will say one thing, this is for the, uh, this for the plastic version. Um, I think that could have been a wing nut or something that slightly extends out a bit. I mean I haven't used it yet so I might be completely wrong and there's no space for that. But if it could extend out to say where my thumb was and have a wing nut on it. That may be better, easier to use, because that's a little fiddly sized Allen key in there, isn't it? Looks like the size of an ICOS ISAR um, electrode Allen key, so I think that's a 3 mil. Anyway, this is what we're using. So let's get this mounted up. Okay, so I've got the tool on there. Um, I will say you have to uh, you have to take this apart completely. Let's go wide. Hold on. You have to uh, take this apart completely to slide it underneath this pipe. I also found that just pushing this clip up a little bit made it a lot easier to get it underneath that fitting. Uh, there may be an easier way. Probably just feed it feed it in from here. But I I slid it under the copper pipe. Pop this clip up a little bit to get it under. I will also say when I tightened it down, it didn't push these tabs in. 
I will say that once I got a bit of uh, pressure on it using this, I was then able to uh, literally push this one in with my finger. And that one there, I, I took a pair of grips like this, slid it in and just pushed it in with the nose of the grips and it done the job. So nothing's been too difficult so far. Um, so we will see. Now I'm going to try and put the adapter in there and spin this. Which is this piece. So this puppy pushes in there like that. And a big flat screwdriver. Probably could do with an even bigger one, but let's see if this turns. And it does turn. I wasn't sure that would, but it did. That's brilliant. Take this out. So that's now turned in, in there. And uh, now we hook this onto the uh, the pin inside, like that, and we withdraw it. So we'll see how easy that is. There's a hole here to put a screwdriver through, so I'm going to do that now. Um, oh, and we'll undo this. This isn't needed anymore. This was just purely to press them retaining clips in. Loosen that off. And then we need to take this blue piece out as well. This blue piece back here. I like that these are blue. Like you're not going to lose them in the boiler, are you? They're really not. That's a good idea that they're that colour. I wonder if they're that by design or by ease of manufacture. Was it the right material that came in that colour? Okay, so that's how easy that all comes back out. Let me put this away and then I'll show you withdrawing it. FYI, I put this on round here and slid it down because it doesn't come past this clip. I mean, it's probably you just take this clip out. But nothing's going anywhere. So if you take that clip out, it's very easy to pop this on. And just so you know, it goes on that ramp, yeah, goes like that. So if you look from above, the wider piece of it goes on the left. That's how that fits in there, like that. So with that clip out, that's really easy to do. Let's see if I can withdraw this now. That clip's back on. So I just put this Allen key through here and gave it a little tug. And there we go. Out it comes. Gonna give all of this a really good clean up in there. But that's it out. So I'm cleaning it. Working my way round. Good as it's going to get. Okay, so here's the cartridge. Um, comes pre greased, which is nice. Now, what I will say the cartridge, the tabs that retain it within the diverter are at 90 degrees to one or at 180 degrees to one another. So, in theory, you could install this 180 degrees out, which would mean you would get no heating at all. So, what you need to make sure of is the hole there. As it goes in, that hole faces the heating pipe here. Okay, if you have it out like that, what will happen is you'll just get hot water. So make sure that's turned the other way. Um, so what would be helpful is if there was a paint mark here uh, on the left hand side to indicate what side that hole is. That would then let other engineers know that it's installed correctly. So I'm going to add a bit more grease to these O-rings, although they don't need it at all. Um, well, I'm going to do it to the to the body of the diverter. Um, and I'll put a red mark on here for my own reference. So I know I fitted this the correct way. Let's see how easy it pops in, shall we? Okay, so you see I put a red mark on there. There's the tab. It has to line up over there. So let's... Uh, Let's 
it's not quite located yet, so I can turn that quite easily. So we'll get it. We will get it. Okay, so that's in. You can see how it looks once it's in. So the hole on the cartridge points to this pipe. Um, these are the retaining pins here and here. You can see that bottom one's in perfectly. The top one didn't go in as well. Uh, it's been a little bit more difficult, but it has gone in. And I've, uh, I'm now gonna put the blue rod on there and make sure I can't pull that cartridge back out. Right, okay, so I got it in. And now I've just attached that just to be sure that I can't pull it back out and that them lugs are engaged and I can't pull it back out. So that's good. That's it in. So I'm just gonna push this clip back down like that. This clip is in. Plug them electrics back in. And it'll just dry up in here a little bit. Um, and then I'm gonna put some water in it. Okay, bish bash bosh. One and a half bar in there. Um, I checked the valve, it doesn't leak. The spindle moves in and out beautifully. Um, job done, uh, or so I thought. So uh, this was filmed on the 29th of January. And uh, on the 22nd of April, I got a recall there for a leaking boiler. So uh, on this footage here, you just see me purge it out and whatnot. But basically, so I got a recall here on the 22nd of April for a leaking boiler. And when I arrived, what did I find? It hadn't popped out, which I guess is what a lot of you thought. No, the um, it was leaking from the spindle again. Exactly the same place. So um, Perfect. So I'll show you some footage of it here, okay? So it was leaking. So basically what I decided to do then was I can't, I can't tell you that this bi-combi kit was good or bad if I don't check the water quality. So I'm going to show you the, I, I took a sample and I don't know if you know these kits, the sample kits are not cheap. I took a water sample uh, and I sent it off to Fernox and uh, this is the results here. So if you can see there, Fernox are basically saying that the, uh, the actions required. So I've put another cartridge in there from Bicombi and, uh, and we'll see, we'll see how long they last, see if they're any good or not. I also have the other tool, the other version of doing this, but what I like about this Bicombi kit is you don't take the diverter valve out. Now the other kit, apparently you don't have to take the diverter valve out, but from what I've seen, it's quite awkward if you leave it in place. And a lot of the actual cartridges come with the seals, so they're suggesting to you that you do have to take it out. So, this honest review. This is what's happened to me. I fitted it. Would I fit one again? Yes. Is there a problem with it? I don't know. Let's see. But there was definitely a problem with water quality. Fernox have confirmed that. So that could be, well, the root cause of this leak. So, and as you see, originally it was leaking very badly, really badly. So, hopefully that's it. Don't forget about Patreon. Go on, give it a little click.